Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. You are listening to Project Me, the podcast with Tiffany Carter. Today's show is one that I guarantee you guys will remember. Our guest is Nicole Sylvester. She's the best-selling author of the book, O Shift, A Journey from Chaos to Consciousness, international inspirational speaker, and a kick-ass entrepreneur transforming people's lives. Hey, Nicole, how was that for an introduction? Hey, thank you. I loved it. Thank you for that warm introduction. I'm so happy to be here with you. You have definitely uh, accomplished a lot in your life, and you've been through a lot. And for those people who are listening, who aren't familiar with your story, would you mind giving like, kind of like a brief version of your incredibly compelling story? Sure. So I'd say the brief version is this, that my life is inspirational now and my message is very inspirational. But just two and a half years ago, I was like in complete hiding about everything that I built my business upon. So this story, everything that's in the book, everything that I teach on, I was hiding it and I was hiding it because I was ashamed of it. And the things that I was hiding was that just, I grew up in a really poor environment, um, neglected around addiction. And I took on those same patterns that I despised in my own life by the time I was 15. And, um, I wound up in brutally abusive relationships, ones that left me in the hospital. Um, I was kidnapped. And then finally with my daughter's father, there was a point where I was at an, just an all time low. And I had a feeling that if I don't get out of this abusive relationship, that I'm going to die. And I actually had to drug him in order to leave with my daughter. And he ended up murdering a woman six weeks later. So that was my lesson that like life, this is my second chance at life. That could have been me. So from that point, I just went on a journey of, can I survive? Can I get sober? And I did. But what, when I did that, I found also that I had greatness within me that I never knew, never expected uh, for myself. So since I've just been willing to, you know, show up for it and, and see what else is here, what else can I say yes to? What made me so attracted to you and your story, aside from like your amazing, authentic energy, for those of you who don't follow her, I will have in the show notes everywhere you can follow her. You need to, especially on her YouTube, Thank you. your videos are, they're beautiful, but they're so authentic. And I've shared with, uh, with my fans and with people who listen to the show, I call mine from abuse to abundance. So we do yeah. share that in common. Um, I've had a very fucked up sexual abuse past history. And therefore, when we have those traumatic childhoods or have things that have happened to us, we end up having this damaged sense of self-worth. Would you agree yeah, with that? I did. Oh my gosh. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's what I, I always say, like, well, wealth consciousness is worth consciousness. That's like, you know, one of my programs I did, I, I said that because people, it was like all these books that I read on money consciousness didn't talk about that. Like, you know, the old ones, uh, thinking of rich and science of getting rich. They didn't talk about forgiveness and worthiness. So like when I recognized that finally, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like I'm a valuable person. I deserve the best. <laughs> and it just like unlocked so much. Obviously there was a process for that, but, um, yeah, I 100% agree. What I teach is like low self-worth equals low net worth. It's a more crude way of what you said. So yeah. You said it beautifully. I tend to be more blunt. But I mean, if you don't have self-worth, you don't feel worthy of great things in your life. So how does your life look like today versus when you first started your journey of healing? Oh, God. I mean, it's dramatically different. And I will say this. I've had money before doing illegal stuff. And I didn't feel worthy of like anything good. (laughs) So the money, like it wasn't the same, like money now feels so good. 
it feels like it's like a reward for me showing up and expressing myself, right? Um, when I first started my healing journey, I really just wanted to be able to like, ima- I couldn't imagine life without wine, some sort of basically alcohol and cocaine. There was periods in my life where I could not imagine what it would be like to have days without either. So to be able to do that and then like I was just trying to survive. And then I got to like a point like, whoa, there's more for me here. I don't have to just survive. Like what if I just said yes to having, you know, this goodness or that goodness. And it just totally grew in all sorts of ways. What inside you... You talk about like helping people and and inspiring people to wake up. It's like something yeah. woke up inside you when you were in that house and you knew you had to drug that man to get you and your child out. I mean, what do you think that yeah. was? I mean, now I know it's my intuition, but back then I didn't know all these terms. I was someone that was like, knew nothing about spirituality, like was against religion, um, and I was living in that kind of bubble, but there was something that was like, go. And, and when I look back at my life, there were different times where my life was like, go. Like when I lived in Vegas, which is where that, that whole murder and everything took place. And I moved back to Philadelphia when I escaped, but then I had this call to move to LA. And then I had a call to like quit my job in finance. <laughs> and then there was like things, but then I started realizing like, oh, I have this guidance that I can actually slow down, listen to, ask questions and expect the answers. So now I just live by that. That is so hard for most people to trust that. How did you, I I don't know if it happened innately for you. How did you get, how did you get to trust that intuition and follow it? So in those moments, it was like always like survival stuff. So it was like, you know, I'm in such deep suffering that like, do I stay here or do I move? Do I take that action? And then when it became other things, like when I started, like when I had the insight to start my business and to do those things, it shifted because then I started like learning, you know, I was like reading A Course in Miracles. I was going to silent meditation retreats. But the thing is when I, what led me to all of those, and I share this is in my book, wasn't because I was like, oh, I want to make a lot of money or I want to start a business. It was because I was having debilitating panic attacks. And that was all of my old trauma that really came up to haunt me. And really for me to like face it once I got sober. Girl, I can so relate. I had to quit being a TV newscaster because I couldn't, that trauma all came bubbling up and being in the public eye, I thought everyone could see my wounds and I I had a nervous breakdown. I mean, when that stuff comes comes bubbling up, man, it's no joke. (laughs) Yeah. You you have no choice but to face it because it doesn't go away. And like I was trying to... I wanted to just basically kill away my old life, like my old version of me. I thought I'll move to LA. I'm going to pretend none of this happened. And I did. And I pretend none of it happened. I pretend I didn't know where my daughter's father was that we just separated. And he went like, you know, went his own way. And I just tried my best. I did so many things. And eventually it just, it came up where I just couldn't, my physical body was shutting down. And then that's what led me to spirituality. When you work with people, or even when you're just around people, I'm sure that you can sense, I call people are like the living dead. That's how I used to be. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can sense that they've not been woken up yet. What is it that you do to start that process so it's not so, I guess, shocking for somebody? So I would say there always has to be a willingness. And if we're willing, and I would say that I don't really work with people at the space of like, they're, they don't even know about any of this stuff. And they're just like, this is, you know, because there's probably a lack of awareness and there's also a lack of willingness there. But for anyone that's at the point of like, something's not working and this needs to change, there's usually a willingness. So it's, I first start always with awareness work, just coming into your body, listening, asking questions. Um, so a lot of the work I do is not even intellectual. We don't, it's not a lot of talking. It's more feeling and knowing that it's okay to feel everything. And like, because part of it, I don't know if you had this when you had your anxiety and, and all of that, but a lot of the compounded pain from that is like shaming and guilting ourselves because we feel that way. And like, I'm not normal. What's wrong with me? So once we realize like, okay, it's okay to feel everything. There's a full spectrum of human emotion. (laughs) 
we are very powerful and then there's less shame and guilt and I find less suffering with it. Yeah, you're right. I feel the shame and the guilt goes hand in hand with the, I guess we could call it like tarnished, uh, self-worth. Right. And that, and also anytime we're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, there's this whole thing of like, especially if I think of someone like you that was like in the public eye like that. And, you know, even for coaches or anyone that's working in a space where it's like, you're expected to be a leader, you're expected to be in a positive state. And then what happens when you have a bad day? What happens when you're feeling down, right? What happens if you are anxious about something that's coming up? Is it okay to feel or do you, does your mind go into space of, I shouldn't feel like this? So it's like, we're dealing with like be, being a human. There's so many feelings. And, you know, if they're contradicting what we think we should feel like a new mom, why do I not feel happy? Why do I feel burdened? You know, we start like guilting ourselves and there's like this whole train of thought and emotion that is suffering that leads us into darker places. I just spoke to a couple clients of mine and one of one of them said to me, I should be happy because I have two beautiful children. I have a high paying job. I have a lovely wife, blah, blah, blah. And that's exactly to your point. It's, yeah. what would you say to someone like that? I would say that why don't we just start at honoring what you feel now and see what's there. And then it's close your eyes, let's go in, <laughs> right? And then we move through breath work and we do things like that because it's like we protect ourselves from the things that we don't want to see. Our mind is like the greatest like protector. And it's just like how we protected ourselves from all of this trauma for years so that we could show up, so that we could survive. And eventually we can't protect ourselves. It comes up to be seen. So it's either we can let it come to a full like breakdown where everything falls apart and everything goes to hell and then we're smacked in the face with it. Or we can notice when we start get the tap on the shoulder. Hey, I'm not happy. Hey, I want to drink more. Hey, I want to eat more. Hey, I want to numb. And then we can go in there and we'll have a different result. Yeah. Listening to the taps, you guys, is a much better way to go. I, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I uh, apparently, I, <laughs> I apparently am extremely stubborn and I require <laughs> severe rock bottoms <laughs> before I Me wake too up. at times. <laughs> yeah. I think, and that's part of being human and like, because we're also, we don't know because it's so unknown. So you're like, okay, do I pull away here and start something else? Or is it time? Do I listen to this? Like, there's a lot of like the lack of trust there too, right? So there's no right or wrong. It's we're all exploring. And I think that's what we just take the pressure off of acting like we have to have it figured all out and we should be feeling away and, you know, all that shooting is bad for our health. <laughs> How did you make... Going, going to the money parks, a lot of people yeah. attribute success to money and we, but we all know that that's not just that. Cause I've had a lot right. of money and I was miserable. And so have you, right. you said, yeah. Yeah. When did the, when did the money at, from being an entrepreneur start coming in for you? At what phase of this work on yourself did it come in? So in 2013, I went from being well 2012 I was working at nightclubs and because before that I was selling drugs and doing all that craziness and then I you know I when I moved to LA I started working in nightclubs and I was making pretty good money almost six figures uh, but then I was like oh my god I'm about to turn 30 <laughs> and like I can't do this forever so what do I do so I went to work in a, as a life insurance um, selling mutual funds life insurance and I would have my first month on my own I was so scared to not make it and not make commission it was pure commission that I made Ten thousand ish dollars. It was just just over ten thousand dollars that month. But the next month, I crashed, and then I had this pattern where I was like, could not sustain making that much money. I would get sick. I would do all these things. So I was like self sabotaging and didn't know it. And when I got the call to become like to start inspiring people, I literally had an awakening. Um, and it basically, I felt that I was told I, it was a voice, but it's like, what is that voice? But there was a voice that said help women share your story. Everything will be taken care of. This was when I was still lying about everything. So I surrendered to that and I was broke at the time. But when I started my business, I was still struggling. I was still broke. And finally I had this moment after just making a few thousand here and there, I had this moment where I was at my spiritual center and I saw like my worth 
I saw my worth. I saw that my human value is so powerful and it's so important more than my net worth could ever be. And I literally cried from it. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So in that, it's like everything shifted after that. And I started realizing where I was telling myself no and denying myself and feeling like I'm not worthy yet. So after that, I like turned my money on and I like within, I don't know, it was a few months. I hit my first like 10,000 plus month in my business, but I went to six figures in six months at that point. Wow. I mean, coming from myself as a 10 year entrepreneur, and this is my second business. You guys, six yeah. months is not normal <laughs> to get to six figures. Yeah, it was crazy. Everyone was like, I mean, I would talk to coaches that I was interviewing at the time because I was like, well, I, I want to work with someone. If I can do this, let me, I want to go to a million. <laughs> like, what, what's the thing? Right. Um, and I would tell them my growth. And it literally, I went from in 2016, I made $12,700. That was my first year in business. 2017, I made 204000 So, it was a huge growth and I didn't hire a coach, but it was like, and I also wrote my book in that time. It was crazy, but it was like, I saw that how valuable I am and the support that I have and that a, I deserve it. Why, why does, why do I feel like other people deserve to thrive and not me? Cause that's what I was basically saying the way I was showing up. If that makes sense. It completely makes sense. I mean, the mindset and the self-worth are, are the foundation that has to be there. But obviously, you took very deliberate aligned action in order to have made your, you know, your business such a success. <laughs> yeah. So what, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I just believed that like I would get, I, well, so I have this whole thing that I talk about called like the implementation barrier, right? And I believe that all day, every day, we're getting ideas and inspiration and like spirit universe, whatever your highest self creative mind is talking to you. So if I'm saying I want to make more money, or I want to make this money, or I want to make this impact that I'm going to get the answers. But when we get ideas, or you know, anyone listening, when you get an idea, what is the implementation barrier? How long do you take before you take action and execute and complete? So for me, it was just like, okay, I'm shortening that. Like when I get an idea and it feels good, I'm taking action on it. So literally like there was like, um, in the three month time period that I made, I forget it was like 70 some thousand dollars or something. And I literally was getting ideas and I would just put it. So I had like a workshop that I did on a Saturday. I had a few private clients and then I did like a a four week intensive all in one time. And it just was like, you know, I was, I was on a hustle, but I also wanted to prove to myself and stretch myself into serving at a new like capacity. And you did all of this with having a rather small following, right? Since you were new. Totally. That's, that's but I was like amazing. showing up like crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, I look back at my Facebook one year ago today, cause that was last year. Um, and I was just always showing up and I actually got inspired by myself last year and was like, I'm going to show up like that now. <laughs> Like, I'm going to be like, you know, why not share like that now? So I was just super aligned with my mission. And I think that's the thing is like, I learned how to put the blinders on and be like, I'm here for me, my daughter and the people that need me. And like, it feels fulfilling and it feels good. And if it starts feeling bad, then I know that I'm out of alignment and I need to revisit like why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. That makes so much sense. And I love what you said about, you call it the implementation barrier. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that because, you know, we can get so many people, we get these ideas or, you know, for those people who drink, they go to, you know, a bar, have a few beers. I have a great idea. You know, yeah. people have ideas or things that they'd love to do, but then they sit on it. And that's where I feel the self-worth comes in. The self-doubt comes in. Do you Absolutely. feel like, do you like, feel do you that feel, has yeah. a big hand in that implementation barrier? Oh, absolutely. Because if you feel like you're not capable of it, you, you won't step forward, but but there has to, there becomes this, um, like trust that a, I'm infinitely resourced. And that's what I had to believe to, to get that all done. Because I was also working with like low, like I didn't have a bunch of capital. I don't have like credit cards. I still don't really have credit cards. Um, so it was like, I, I was just like acting And I believe that we can do things very simple. So like while some people may have these complicated back-end digital courses, I was just launching stuff, easy, simple. And I believe that the message was more important than any of that. And it proved to be. 
I do. I, and I'm so glad you shared that because I do feel that people can get stuck in the details, technology, the platforms. I don't know how to do this. And, yeah. And you just, you know, you just, you're an example. You went out and did it. It wasn't some elaborate custom approach where you had to take out a business loan for. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I wish that I could have, right? But my credit was shot from all the other stuff in my past. So it was like what I learned to do. I learned how powerful I was though. But it's not just that I'm powerful and everyone else is powerless. It's like, I learned to turn that on. And I learned to say yes and to stretch and to really have an experiment with life. Like, will life catch me? Are these things true that people talk about these universal laws? And I found out that they are true. So now it's like leaning into them. And now you help guide and teach others to tap into their to their own spark, to their own gifts, right? Right, right. So like I teach really awareness work, but I also call people out on their BS, right? Like if people come to me and they say, I really want to do this. And we start looking at the way they're showing up and I'm like, you're contradicting all of that. So like, let's choose. And it's just having someone that is not enabling and someone that has done all this from experience, because it's like, I hear people like, I can't start a business. I don't have time. I can't write a book. I don't have time. I'm like, I did that to my income last year. I wrote a personal, like highly triggering memoir. Um, I have my daughter and I have to take care of myself. <laughs> so it's like, we can do whatever, but it's like, do we have the beliefs to support what we, what we would like to do? I, I I couldn't agree more. All those excuses is just a form of of fear talking because we all find ways to do things that we want to do, right? Right. Whether it's and it could be like show or <laughs> stuff or right, face or scroll on Facebook forever. But also, it's like some people they may not even know it's fear because in their limited mindset, because we're all limited in some ways, and that's like one of the most humbling things I've done with me making more money is like realize that the way that I make money now, the things that I believe are about money now are not true. They're not true. They're lies. Because if I was making $20 million a year, I would laugh at the way that I make money now. So it's like calling myself out on all these things, but knowing that sometimes it's not fear. Sometimes it's just, you don't know because it's so far outside of your paradigm that it's not reality to you. So for some of these people, they're like, oh my God, I didn't even know that I was doing this to myself. So it's, it's interesting. We're like all in this big illusion and we get to play with it. That's why I feel that working with like the right coach, the right mentor can really skyrocket in terms of your trajectory of launching your business or whatever it is you're desiring to do or whatever emotional point you want to get to in your life. But it's so key that it's with someone who is aligned. So what would you say would be a good way for someone to determine if you know, if you're the right person for them to work with or someone else. Yeah, I would say that I always say this coaching is just like dating. And I'm not the kind of person that I mean, there's like a coaching standard where people are like, you always need a coach. I, I don't think that I think you should always have support. And sometimes it's not a coach. Sometimes it's something else. But I will say this, that, you know, we all know when we feel that there's a person that we should be closer to, that we should be learning from, that there's something there for you to find out. And it may be like you're watching someone's video or you read someone's book or you watch, you listen to a podcast. It could be, you know, any of those things. And there's something in you that's like, jump, try this. This is good. And for a lot of people, they get that, that feeling and they feel so strong and it's such a yes. And then they find out how much it costs and they're like, no. But what happens in those moments is we're choosing to idolize money over our own potential and whatever's on the other side of that. Yeah. So it's just, it's listening. So are you going to go look for the most discounted? And I'm even like, I feel like I'm an excellent teacher, but I'm not even like in the space of charging what I could be. Right. But it's like, I see people do this all the time. So they get the yes. It's a hell yes. And I've done it with myself. I've done it. So it's just listening to those nudges because your soul knows what it needs for its next rite of passage. It's next stage of evolution. Yeah, I, I can really relate to that on both sides, right? On people um, hiring me or on me, you know, mm -hmm. wanting to engage with them. I just, I know. And then it's like, well, do I really want to spend that money right now? And it becomes, it's like a sidetrack with money. And what makes no sense is 
for someone like myself and a lot of the people that come to me, the, I have the money. Yeah. So it's bullshit. Yeah. And it could just be like, is this a priority right now? Like there's things in my life right now where I'm like, that would be really nice. But is it a priority? And then it's just, we have to do more feeling into it, you know? But you're also probably not at a high stage of suffering like me either. <laughs> like my life is pretty good right now, right? So it's like deciding for people that are, and it's the the toughest thing because it's usually people that are in the highest place of suffering and frustration that are not willing or unable to like swallow taking that big of a risk or investment. But I will say, like I tell this to everyone that my risk tolerance has allowed me this level of result. Yeah. So like I can take a big risk. I, I'm okay with take. I've already had such a shitty like life <laughs> with so many things happening that like for me, I'm not afraid of losing something because I know I'll make it back. Well, you could or have I been, know that I'm you could have been the one who was murdered. So yeah, like, <laughs> so I, I just see that like all these other things are not that important. And I think for some people, it's like, oh, my God, I may have to pay my rent late. Like, I'm not that person. I was like, OK, if my rent is a couple of days late, late, I'll pay the fee and I'll be fine. It will work out. <laughs> so like I was that person. But you know what? It it worked out for me. But you know, what's funny is and you probably see this, too. When And I was recently at my mastermind where I was listening to all these like seven, eight figure entrepreneurs talking about their story. They all were at these rock bottoms. They all were. And it's like that victory story comes from being able to take that risk and saying, yes, in my opinion, that's my experience. So some people are like avoiding having any discomfort, but like if they're also like getting in the way of their own victory. That's true because... <laughs> You, the only way out is through, you guys. You can't get around your own shit. You have to feel it and go through it. I wish there was another way. I've tried them all. <laughs> so has Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it actually, I, aren't you like happy you went through it at the end? I am. It's like, it shapes me. Yeah, you know. It's I, not I fun am, in it. I am. I am. Ha I mean, I'm, I can say I'm happy because I'm not in it now. But I know that I was supposed to go through all that. Right. So that you know, we could bring a lot more awareness and um, help to other people who, who may not have that at this time, you know? Right. Like life, I believe life gives us what we need to let us allow us to help others how we need to help others. And for some people that are even starting their business, they are like, well, I mean, it would, how I would not be the same woman if I started my business like I thought I would. I thought I was going to get a website and put PayPal something together. And I was going to start making money in my sleep. That was like the biggest joke. It never happened. Right. So if that would have happened, though, I would not be the same woman I am today. All that other stuff, like brought out the like grit in me that was dormant and it allowed me to like dive like depths of me that I didn't even like know how to access before. So, so like that financial were, struggle helped me. You were going to go down like the almost like a digital course type path, right? Yeah, I wanted to. I want. I wanted to go down that path. I mean, I didn't even know what the hell I was doing when I started the business. I was just. I thought, let's put this website together. I'm going to put this like one ninety seven dollar course on my website. Of course, people are going to buy it, and then people can reach out to me if they want more coaching. And it went nothing like that. No one ever bought that course. <laughs> so that never worked. So because it didn't work, you obviously switch things up, right? Yeah. I mean, I was readjusting course every like 30 days. I mean, all in between, like I was just watching responses. I was tweaking everything um, while also just diving into like studying deeper things, like traveling to go do deeper work any way that I could borrowing money with my tax refund. I just posted about that today. It's like today is a two year mark that I decided to write my book because I went to a Tony Robbins event when I didn't even have the money. I bought the ticket with my tax refund. And what, when this date rolled along, I didn't have the money for all my food when I would fly to Dallas. And my friend was like supporting me with like meals. <laughs> and she like even took me to a nice dinner because that's what I would normally want to do. Um, but it's like two years later, that book is a book bestseller. I'm like going on a book tour and my business is multiple six figures now. My God. But it's taking all those risks for me. Yeah, it was a risk and listening to those clear, that clear yeah. intuition and taking immediate action on it, not sitting. A lot of stuff. action, 
a lot of crying, a lot of breakdowns. Like, I mean, it's not like this, like, oh, I'm trusting, I'm listening, I'm obeying, I'm supported. It's like, oh my God, am I crazy? Am I fucking crazy? Okay. No, I'm not. Okay. Let's just keep going. And it just like, you know, it's trusting that even though it goes against all logical kind of, you know, evidence. That pretty much describes entrepreneurship, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Truly. it. Am I crazy? Should I do this? Do you want to be a part this? of this club? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much sums it up. Well, I have to ask, I have to ask this question because I know people will yeah. kill me if I don't because there's so many people yeah. who feel they have, and, and everyone has a story. They feel they have a memoir yeah. in them. So how did... How did this happen for you? Did you go and send out to, you know, send out a bunch of letters to publishers? How did this book come to fruition? Yeah. So in in the beginning, it actually did start like that because I was like, I don't want to spend all this money. I, I really didn't think that I had the money. I mean, I had the money making in me, I realized at later, but I would send out like a short summary. And I, I looked up publisher or I, I looked up agents and I sent it out and I got rejected. Some people didn't respond, but I was just like, I don't care at this point. I feel called to write this book. This book like needed to be birthed. And, um, I started writing it two years ago and then December came along and I just realized like I need support. And people were talking about book coaches and editors and all these things. So I put a little post on Facebook and I asked like, who knows someone that fits this description. And I had a bunch of referrals. And the funny thing is I actually hired someone that was the highest price point, had the most gorgeous photos. So I was like, totally like sucked into that thing then. And also like promised the world to me. And I hired her and my manuscript sucked when I got it back. And it was devastating. <laughs> and like I went down the wrong path of writing the book. Um, but what it taught me was this whole thing, like, am I willing to dig deeper and give it another go? And I did. So I hired the next person that was on that list of, you know, all those referrals. And I started rewriting the book last year. And so now, um, that editor, her name's Sarah Fox, she kicked my ass. Like she made me such a better writer. She called me out on all the redundancies and like, what didn't make sense. And we just got it down to like a really, like all the essentials. And now people are reading this 300 page book in like a day or two, which is like mind blowing, um, because it's super well written, but it wasn't that way without her. So, um, I'm actually going to teach a class on how like a free class online in August on how like the process went down for me, because I feel like writing a memoir, like it could save someone's life if you've been through some tough stuff. You never know who needs it. That's so true. And they can find that information on your website? Yeah, I'll put it on my website. Okay. It's not up yet because we're promoting some other stuff. But if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you'll always know what's going on with all of these things. And guys, again, I'll make sure all this all this stuff, all the live links will be in yeah. the show notes. Um, so with this, with this editor was but that wasn't a pub she wasn't a publisher you had to shop that book then didn't you? oh no i self-published i chose to self-publish and here's why i was writing a memoir and i could have shopped the book and i could have got a book deal eventually but this is what i wanted to get my message out there to my people and start making money start making impact and do what i'm here to do without anyone else getting in my way and what like down the road i'm open to a book deal i'm open to things like that just to get it out way you know way out into the world but for me, what I've heard from my friends that have had books done is that like, if you have a publishing deal, they'll say, well, I want you to write more about your mom. I want you to write more about this incident. I wanted my story to be my story. So yes, it costs more up front, and I invested a lot into it, but you know, it, I grew through it and it's a really great book. So I'm really proud of it. And I'm really happy with the cover art who um, was done by Regina Wamba. She like crushed it. So everything I'm happy with. And now I'm making my money back <laughs> on the book already. So it's, it's the way I want it to go. And you're on a, you're currently on a book tour. Don't you leave tomorrow, yeah. right? Yeah. I leave tomorrow. So I chose four spots and we're going to do more locations, but, um, I chose four spots. So we've already done two. And now I'm going to the final two this coming week in Philly and New York. And did you have to invest in all that yourself since there's not a big publishing yeah. house paying for it? Yeah, I'm investing in all of it. So for me, I mean, I look like I look at it like I'm making my money back through book sales and ticket sales. 
But for me, it's like an experience. And I know that my message needs to get out there. And I'm not doing a book tour in a traditional sense um, of like making it all about my book. I'm making it about the process that allowed me to share my story and write the book. And I'm leading people through like a healing process at the event. So it's been really beautiful on both sides, um, the people that have been there and for me. So yeah, I'm just, I'm self-investing in all this. Wow. I mean... I am so inspired. Listen to that, you guys. Oh, you want to write a book, but you don't know how to get a publisher. You don't know how to do this. She <laughs> yeah. self-published the goddamn thing and is self and is self-planning and paying for her own tour and is still profiting. Profiting. So Yeah, and it, <laughs> it became bestseller in three hours. You know, like <laughs> oh there is strategy. There is a strategy, right? Like, I mean, the thing is, I'm naturally... I'm naturally like a gritty kind of person. So I'm like, okay, if there's a way, I'll figure out the way, <laughs> right? So some of it, I'm like, you know, you reach out to people, but I just believe that we're so resourceful. We don't have to depend on anyone, but there's always going to be helpers and they're available when we ask for them. Totally. And I also believe that people with uh, trauma in their backgrounds, like you and I who have survived through it, that's where there's always... Um, there's always the upside to going through those shitty experiences because it makes you, I call it a scrapper. It makes you a scrapper. You figure that. Yeah. You can figure <laughs> anything is. else. If yeah. you can survive through all that shit, <laughs> yeah. you know that you can figure anything out. I mean, a book, I'll figure out a goddamn book if I got through that childhood. Exactly. <laughs> right. So yeah, it is like a blessing like that. And you know, I just, I love working with people that are also like that because I just feel like that they understand life like they're, they're not sheltered in any way right so it's it's a process i feel like I, I i attract a lot of people like that i'm friends with a lot of people like that and i found that like those things i used to be ashamed of that like people that have not been through any of those things they also are attracted to it because they're like oh my god you've done all this then let me let me do this <laughs> let me get this done so it it works out it's all happened by divine reason right everything's by divine, including for those of you who are listening to this episode right now, you're hearing this episode for a reason, you were attracted to it for a reason, whether or not you've already read the book O Shift, if you haven't, you need to. And it's on Amazon, right? Is that the only place you yes. can get it? Yeah, Amazon and Kindle, like, uh, like a book and a Kindle right now, but I'm going to do Audible, but I have to go in the studio. And it's just another whole thing. So I'm like, okay, we'll do that like later this summer. So yeah, so you guys can get the book. And if you've not even heard of her before or heard of her book, you were attracted to this episode for a reason. And if you recall at the top of the show, I said this will be one episode that I know you'll remember. I knew that before we started. So oh. how about that? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Let us know later. I would love to hear too from anyone that does read it or share me or tag me. I mean, it's still such a surreal feeling because the book was like really uncomfortable to write. And when anyone reads it, they'll see why. Um, because I really did not hold back with getting like very vulnerable and go taking people into those really difficult moments. But I knew people needed it. But it's like it was the hardest thing to write. And I even questioned, should I write it in March? And I launched in May. Like, should I should I release it? And um, when I did, it's like now seeing everyone reading it and like just getting the feedback. It's It's so good for an author, at least for me. It feels really good. Of course. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and all those amazing, all those amazing tools that you have packaged in such beautiful words. I've not read your thank book you. yet, but I'm excited to because just based on what I see, you know, through your social media posts and, and how I hear you speak, it, it's so clear and direct. You can't you can't not get the message, if that makes thank sense. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. And, you know, it means a lot because no matter how, like, somebody might listen to this and they're like, this woman is so confident. She know, like, my daughter always says, but you don't feel like that. Like, we went to go watch I Feel Pretty and we were talking about confidence. She was like, you don't feel like that. I'm like, I do feel those things, but, like, I decided to move on anyway. Yeah. And, you know, so it's like, it's, it's just one of those things. And I think everyone needs to know that. Like, cause some people were like, but she feels like this and you're, it's easy for you to go on video. And I'm like, I used to be scared to death to go on video. <laughs> like I used to be like, I don't want to go and get a photo by myself. And now I'm just like, okay, let's do the video. Let's take photos. <laughs> so it's just stretching. That's exactly what it is. Well, thank you so much. 
and I look forward to reading your book and meeting you actually you. in person someday because we have a lot Absolutely. of Absolutely. Yeah, I would love to. All right. Thank you. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.